or something in the beginning. Well, at least you should actually film our intro, like, or record our intro, like we said, so we don't have to say it every time. But do we? Oh, that would be neat if we had a recorded intro. We've said that multiple times, so we don't have to do it. This is a great start. Yeah, though. I wouldn't know how to start it up, but welcome. Welcome back from the ground up. It is now 2019. Woo! And it feels like it's been so long because... It has. <laughs> it has, and because Christmas fell on a Monday, and then New Year's fell on a Monday, and then the national championship game was yesterday. So lots of stuff on Mondays. I promise this is not going to be our new normal. We're going to go back to Mondays. but Yeah, we may have a few. It just depends. We're really going to get people when we're able to get people at a certain extent. It's like I can't be choosy sometimes with, mm-hmm. you know, I just want to get shows done. And I don't know. I'm pumped. This is like a big year. But before we go into all of that, uh, T-shirts, PortCityPythons.com. We also have some animals available. Um, I guess we could try to ship them, but most likely nothing will be shipped until much later as far as uh, maybe colubrids may be a little bit different, but all the ball pythons we have aren't really going anywhere for quite a while. I didn't even realize we had any ball pythons left. No, they're all on hold, but oh, but okay. they're all here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. We're not going to be able to get any of those out. That was just speaking. I don't know why I'm telling everyone that, but. But as far as reptiles, we are going to be at the Oaks show in less than a month now. That will be awesome. (laughs) You said, "Mm," like, I thought I was like, I said the wrong thing. You said that, like, I was like, oh, crap, I'm not supposed to say it or what. We've been in snake retail purgatory for a couple Mm -hmm. months now. (laughs) I want to get out there. You want to get back out there. Yeah, it's going to be fun to go. So I think it's February 2nd. I think, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, it's February 2nd. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. It is a one-day show. I'm not sure if it's Saturday or Sunday. But yes, we should hopefully maybe have our shit together. By then. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. But we should have like about 30 or so out in Oaks, Pennsylvania. There you go. That is in the Philly area for those who do not know. What else do we have to talk about as far as the beginning? You know, that's our well, intro. there is kind of a weird, I don't know, thing that we felt very borderline on. And at one point, I feel like we said we would never do. But oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not at one point, at multiple points, we said we would never do. But so I feel like a tel- terrible hypocrite. Oh, it's awkward. I didn't know you're doing this. But we did start a Patreon page. So we are trying to. Basically, get people to support us to do more of what we do. And quite frankly, we haven't found like a great way to do that that isn't Patreon. And everyone else seems to use it and enjoy it. And it would be a good way for us to be able to keep up content as far as podcasts and videos. And if I want to make more podcasts and videos, I need more time, which means I need to be taken away from other things. And we're hoping that we can get like some travel expenses and stuff like that because we want to reach, you know, a broader audience and reach as far as our touch of where we're at, you know, where we can travel to. Um, We want to highlight like different people in the reptile community, as well as definitely a lot of nonprofits and stuff like that and kind of cater more towards conservation in the new year as well, as well as other like I said, nonprofit organization. So our theme of the year last year was kind of the reptile community as a whole and getting more in depth and really supporting the people that we really liked in the reptile community through videos. But the theme was start podcasts. now. <laughs> We're starting now. That's what the theme was. <laughs> Whatever we could get reaching out. Yeah. It's just us. It was really now. building like the foundation of what we have done thus far. And this year we want to be, we want, now that we have a little bit of a platform, you know, we're not like, you know, we don't have. We're not biggins, but. Yeah. But now that we have at least a couple people paying attention, we want to, you know, get more of a conservation message and reach out to more people. And a lot of times we feel like a lot of us just kind of preach to the choir as far as like reptile content goes and stuff like that. And I think. It's hard for someone to positively reach out beyond our small circle of reptile people because like we we spend a lot of our time 
telling reptile people that our reptiles are awesome. <laughs> and <laughs> most reptile people already know that. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore it's like, how can we find new ways to tell people reptiles are awesome? And probably I always lean towards more of like the telling people reptiles are awesome in the wild type of thing. So like I want to do more herping and stuff like that because ultimately for me, at least like, you know, what matters is what's going on with these animals in the wild and conservation. And if we can do things to contribute to that, from our hobby, I think that that looks good for everyone, and it gets more cross pollinating. I don't, I don't even cross -pollinating. know. Cross <laughs> pollinating. <laughs> yeah, I just want to kind of get more involved in that stuff and do that with the podcast and videos going forward. So yeah, that was a rant, huh? Soapbox. <laughs> so basically, that's why we did that. So hopefully, maybe we can travel one day or do something. I keep on turning my face away from the mic See? which i'm not supposed to do and i'm yeah, doing it i'm not even doing i've i don't know it's very hard we're still working out this mic thing i've, I've hit it though like four times <laughs> so that's something we don't know how to turn our heads like this i know we keep on looking at each other i don't know maybe we need to go back to holding it we thought this would be easier and we kind of suck at well, it well you're definitely not looking uh, yeah. we'll see it's so hard <laughs> but mm -hmm. we kind of wanted to talk about well, first, I wanted to mention all of the other podcasts that, like, so many reptile podcasts. NPR, obviously, has been on for, like, seven years or so. And then we have, like, newer podcasts coming around, like Herpetological Highlights, which started around when we started. And they're putting out awesome podcasts and the Herpeticulture podcast. And um, what's uh, the one with Jeff Godbold? Um, Corrales and then like just all these things that are springing up and this is like I feel like a great time to listen to reptile to podcasts. Be a podcaster and snakes <laughs> and the fat man he puts out episodes every once in a while and just there's been some really awesome reptile content on the podcast um, front well, which is across new. the world like podcasts you know are becoming more of a thing mm -hmm. you and I always talk about like Joe Rogan and the what millions of like listens and downloads he has like way more than TV, you know, most TV shows get his podcast is getting. And so clearly it's, it's a thing and <laughs> it's popular. It's also trendy. I feel like mm -hmm. every like D list celebrity has a podcast. And I that, think that's the that shitty bothers part me. Of it. That yeah. that's what makes yeah, that's a little bit that makes me hate podcasts. But then there's also a lot of really good ones. There's just no way for it to be tacky in a reptile sense. Meaning is no, I don't I think. Guess, it's, I don't think no. I I mean no, I but agree. I'm saying you can't I be don't know yeah. like what D list celebrity could ever do a reptile pot. You know, like it's just so different right. that but none of us are D list D list <laughs> celebrities in the snake world. We're not celebrities. <laughs> at all so i think we're st it's still interesting ones um <laughs> yeah i wonder if there would be some weird um i guess like mickey mouse pet tuber type of, of, <laughs> of reptile podcast. podcast yeah i don't know about, about keeping uh danger noodles as pets and bopping their snoots properly and all of that good stuff i don't know but, <laughs> but our podcast and the podcast we mentioned before we really think are awesome <laughs> <laughs> you said our podcast yeah well, of course we think oh, the podcast God. is awesome and it was just great to learn from those other podcasts over the year and you know how it let that influence ours and just learn more and we all grow together yeah yeah that's the thing like obviously npr is the one that stayed consistent obviously there was reptile radio before that and then NPR, and then there's been some people kind of in and out and whatnot. But I mean, like, they're really like Eric and Owen to us are also, you know, they're always Pod encouraging fathers. and stuff like that. So it's like they paved the way for us. And then you got to help everyone. Yeah. Because together we can <laughs> reach oh, the masses. Gosh. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Didn't warn you how cheesy this podcast is. Yeah. What be. are we doing? um mike said we have a listers on our podcast we have got like even though this is our foundational year we definitely got 
some major well, names in there. Okay, so <laughs> there's a few people that I just I don't know how we would ever get, but like are the obvious holy grails, right? Like, well, Marco Shea was one. Yeah, yeah, but we're going like next, next. What's up, the like, bald guy we want to get? The bald guy. Well, I'm that's gonna, gonna be start off on the good. <laughs> I shouldn't just call him the bald guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you should be more complimentary when we're. What's his name? Get... Oh, oh, Brian Greg Fry. Fry. Yeah, I knew it was a three person name. I mean, a three named person. You should Brian Greg Fry. I knew that. Maybe you should email yeah. him say, "Hey, bald guy." <laughs> Maybe he'll answer it then, <laughs> or at least open it. <laughs> well, I'm specific. talking like next, next level. Like, oh, how do you not, get? Oh, okay. How do you get David Attenborough on a podcast? I don't know who that is. So, are you serious? Yeah, explain. I'm sorry. Oh my god! I'm like, sorry. Like, think you know, voice of Planet Earth. Does the whole is the whole world supposed to know? Yes, the yes. voice of the, Planet Earth. Yes, the I've whole. never. Well, I watched Planet Earth a million times, and not once have I ever wondered whose voice is that. No, it doesn't really have to. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into it. It's hard to, <laughs> but everyone who's listening knows who he is. Like, um, and he's I Sir David Attenborough. He's knighted by the Queen, Whoa. and you don't know who he is. Okay, okay, sorry. This is ridiculous. I blame you. That's something you should teach. Me. And I, uh, E.O. <laughs> Wilson, who is a Harvard professor and entomologist. We could get him a professor. That's not hard. No, he's about, he's like 96. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's probably more like 94. Does know. he have like a child or grandchildren who followed in yeah, his footsteps? But, <laughs> but he like, he wrote like a lot of really influential books as far as like the science community um like letters to a young scientist and basically yeah he's kind of the man but okay i don't know <laughs> he also went to alabama Let's see. so Ew. <clears throat> i'm surprised you even brought up alabama this mm. night it's a little embarrassing um yeah that was whew. other than that i mean maybe bob Irwin. maybe that would be a big one yeah yeah. Well, seven degrees of separation, they say, is a thing. <laughs> so someone might know someone might know someone who might know a 96-year-old Harvard, Harvard professor, professor. <laughs> or might have ties to Australia. Jane Goodall would Irwin's. also be one. Oh, my. Okay, yeah. No, no, no. It sounds so familiar. We should have so went over familiar. these names beforehand. It sounds so, so familiar. Can, Jane Goodall. And then also Neil deGrasse Tyson. Wait, we said we that We literally last were night. talking about that last night, Neil what? Oh, I oh, can't say why yeah, we're yeah, talking we about were. it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, Joe literally said Neil deGrasse Tyson last night. I but would, then that's like a little bit too far that's out like of celebrity. our comfort zone. I would be like, well, no, it's. I just, feel like I wouldn't be comfortable enough to like be real. Like, I wouldn't know what to talk chat. about. We definitely wouldn't going drink beer. Way <laughs> outside the realm of our normal podcast. I don't know. Maybe he knows about reptiles. <laughs> I'm sure, he knows something. That would be next level. Well, let's I mean, talk about, uh, yeah. Like, like that's true. Like, yeah, never going to happen. But crazy wild dreams. I mean, you can say never going to happen, but we could figure it out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> oh, no. Mike uh, brought it up. Mike, do you know Neil deGrasse Tyson? <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> can we you can make that happen. Out. Who lives in Hollywood? <laughs> oh, my God. He lives in New York. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so you <laughs> you never said who Jane Goodall is, even though I know I should know that. So she basically she's the first one who discovered, I believe, that primates use tools. So you know, like that was one of the biggest discoveries that made it like, I don't know, like these are little fucking humans. <laughs> but <laughs> but she lived. That was with what the... she wrote down. These are little f. She lived humans. with the chimps and everything <laughs> like that for like. A long time. That's a really, really terrible overview of what she does, and therefore we would probably never have a chance of getting her on the podcast. How but... old is she? Oh, she's up there as well. I was about to say she if may you're be late. <laughs> you're probably up there. You think she's eighty four? With... Living with chimps is like an old lady thing, or well, uh, that in combination with discovering they use tools. Well, this I mean, happened I feel in like the seventies or something. I think. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was something that was discovered <laughs> a long time ago. No. 
Oh, you mean like early 1900s or something? I don't. Yeah. Or sorry. like with Darwin. Just, let's just stop. Uh, no, no specifics. Let's just <laughs> no. stop revealing how dumb I sound right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll stop that. But let's talk <laughs> about all the great people that we had on the podcast this year. Yeah. Like we said, like this is. I feel like we just got traction on the podcast like four months ago. <laughs> Except YouTube's really being annoying right now, and there's only seven viewers, <laughs> and I hundred percent blame YouTube. Because, They're probably not sending it out because we haven't. Well, yeah, done because it. we haven't posted up enough videos recently, so it stopped liking us. Yeah, YouTube. If you like, don't consistently do it, it'll it won't consistently send it out there. So yeah, normally we have. We'll stop telling people our woes and get into get the, into it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe people will come if I now we were it. so off topic that I don't remember. So Okay, we didn't get that far. We were gonna talk about our top podcasts of the year. Yep. Um, so just backtracking a little bit. Um, preface this by saying all of our podcasts were great and episodes, and we are so thankful for the people that came on and took their time mm -hmm. two hours, sometimes four hours. <laughs> <laughs> um to talk to us and to share their wisdom, especially people who had recently been on the other podcast and had to kind of say a lot of the same things <laughs> again. Um, it was probably annoying, even though we tried to make it different. But yeah, thank you to all the great, uh, what do you call them? They're not interviewees, we're not interviewing them. Just guests, that was stupid. <laughs> guests, yeah, let's go Thanks guess. to all the guests that came on. But we're, we're gonna- Yeah, this is like, the first time we really we tried to be as diverse as possible as far as uh, we had pretty much just a bunch of our friends on before this year you know at this point we were just early in it so we just had basically a bunch of our friends on but this year we really got to talk to a lot of crazy people that i never thought that i would ever get to talk to so that being said i mean we're gonna do them in a little bit of time order Kathy Love was one of one of those early episodes. Uh, yeah, so well, I wish we had put dates, but those don't matter. But earlier in the year, we had Kath, uh, Kathy Love on. And if you don't know, she is basically like, I don't want to say originator, but one of the beginning core group of people when it comes to corn snakes. Um, and developing those morphs and um, all the different phenotypes and everything when it comes to corn snakes, her and her husband. Yeah. So basically, Kathy Love was, you know, originated a lot of the mutations that we see in the hobby today. Things like Sunkist. Uh, she has a line of Ocates. She also did a lot of the line breeding for things like um, Sunglow which is reducing the white in AMLs and a lot of other cool line breeding projects, as well as some morphs that popped up along the way and just really kind of paved the way for selective breeding in corn snakes. Um, among, obviously, Dr. Bechtel, who bred the first uh, AML corn snake that I believe is wild caught in North Carolina or South Carolina or something like that and bred it back. And yeah, so... Kathy was like the next generation after Dr. Bechtel, you know? So it's like, like she knew him, which is crazy to think. And it's always interesting for me, at least, to learn, uh, it's going to sound lame, about a time where I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything prior to 1994. When was I born? 93. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, because a lot of people we talk to who, you know, around our age or a little bit older obviously i can learn from them but those are present day things what back then there were so many things that didn't get written down or like might not be in a book like there's yeah, so we much didn't all posted on instagram right, right. like right now yeah i can go look on someone's social media i can go see exactly when they put this snake with this snake because they probably recorded it and you know and i can see who they were with or who mm -hmm. commented or what everyone thought about it but with kathy love I I did it. I, there's no way for me to do that, <laughs> which sounds so simple. I know, but like, it was so great to hear her describe them sending like little books of pictures of snakes and getting it in the mail and getting so excited, you know, when they would see that or like postcard descriptions with what this new morph someone made are or was or how the fact that 
they expected some snakes to die after six months to a year. Like that was normal. And just, I like learning about history in that sense and how the snake world was then. And I also love comparing it to now, you know, where have we grown? Where have we fallen? Um, what can we still change? And what are things we took from the past that still influence us so much today? Yeah. Wow. Rant, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, I thought it was very good. And your response was, yeah. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, I said, wow, rant, man. That's what I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're exactly right. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, yeah. It's just, I mean, you want to make sure these people know that they're appreciated because I feel like in so many subsects of little, you know, whether it's hobbies or culture, like the the new generation comes and kind of disses the old generation in a way and is like, we're better than you. Well, that happens in any in anything. And I'm sure there are those people in reptiles, but I feel like we all, you know, really depend on the people before us more so than a lot of other things that you could be doing. It's both. Cause we also are like, ha ha. He, uh, you know, the red layouts that they used to use and like all that kind of stuff that we would never. Oh, use and now. you can still see someone legit <laughs> doing something that's very old school. And you're like, Whoa, dude, <laughs> Wait, why are you still doing that right now? Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that's what they know. And if it works for them, I it guess you can. Yeah. Yeah. And then they probably, you know, the people who keep in tubs on newspaper laugh at the people who keep in seven layers of bioactive substrate <laughs> and drainage layer. And they all laugh. They both laugh at each other and think each other are wrong. I mean, but the, the fact is, I mean, some things work for some people. And, and the fact is both those people learned it from someone else who did it before, you know, it's yeah, like, that's true. Like, yeah, you think the other one's weird, but they both got it from history in somewhere. And so when we talk to those people who were in it, when it started, you learned where those ideas came from or um, why some things are done. Yeah. So and I mean, bioactive still so young and there's just, right. it's going to be crazy what happens in the future when, when our children are asking us, mom and dad, <laughs> what was your first uh, terrarium period? Just that like, stuff like. <laughs> Yeah, which is your really average offspring. Or, you know, <laughs> I like to refer to them as unlovingly as possible and refer to them as <laughs> offspring. <laughs> okay. That's great. Future children. <laughs> yeah, they're real odd children. Okay. Wow. You really got us off topic real quick. Thank you. Um, but yes. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to our next podcast um did you want to well just i think you're glancing over i mean i love the ray morgan episode if you're if you're interested in venomous you know animals of any type or learning about venomous snakes check it out because that was fun he lives in costa rica full time and yeah he's just a cool dude also i mean this is really like the first very like social media savvy mainstream person we had on and like our first ball python. I mean, like a lot of our a lot of our guests have had ball pythons, but this is like the ball pie python guy. Are you gonna say his name or just be very the man himself? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I really loved it. it Justin Kabelka and having him on, he was a cool dude. And a lot of cause like I wanted to talk business with him because obviously, I mean, I don't wanna if you have Justin Kabelka on. Why are you going to ask him, like, do you keep an 88 degree hotspot or 92 degree hotspot to breed? Come on, man. Everyone right. knows we're how to breed a ball in, python. We're not we going to go know. into ball python breeding. We want to know, you know, how he's built what he's built and how he's known for what he's known. You know, he's known for the highest quality ball pythons and the best, you know, some of the best business ethics. And we want to learn all about that because we obviously need to take from that and other people in the hobby who are listening you know, want to take a little bit of that and, you know, you want to be respected in whatever niche of the hobby you're in, you know, just like Justin is. So that was a cool insight into more of a marketing business side of things and kind of his thoughts on that kind of stuff, which was super sweet. And for the longest time, I want to say honestly, till maybe like 
September of last year, that was our highest listen yeah. to video. So like it's interesting. Well, well YouTube is I had, I had a feeling it was mostly because he's a ball python person and that's the majority and it's of people Justin in the fucking world. Kabelka. People really like <laughs> Justin Kabelka. Everyone in Ball Pythons <laughs> likes Justin Kabelka. And knows his name. Yeah. He's yeah, he's yeah. Just and it was man. funny because it like I don't remember what it is, but he had to do it in his car for some reason. Um, and I thought I remember his wife was shopping and he had to do it in his car. Oh yeah, he wasn't home yet. Um, and I felt so awkward and bad the whole time that he's just sitting. But in his he car. was very composed about it, and I feel like we got a really good interview, interview out, out of it, it, which is hilarious. It was just, just so weird because I he's was just on it immediately. Yeah. Brandon, I mean not Brandon. Wow, sorry, Dan. Dan asked, <laughs> did you see, I just expect Brandon to be there and he's not. So shame on you, Brandon. But Dan said, do you, did you see that hundred galley? I can't. 180 gallon bioactive that Justin posted. I wonder, is he talking about Thank Justin? Kabelka. I'm, I'm assuming. That's crazy. I don't know what he's How putting in there. How big was that? Would that be? He's going to need. How big is 180 gallons? Like. Oh, it's know. fucking huge, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was wow. not that's not ridiculous. <laughs> like it, it would easily take it would take up this space. Okay. Easily. What are you gonna easily. put in that? I don't know, man. Like a monitor? I don't know. Apparently we gotta see it. It has to not Dan's it can't keeping be a snake. us on, on ice. It has over to be something that, with legs. I don't know. You should look it up, but now that we're gotten way too deep into it. We were supposed um to sorry. <laughs> also, hi everyone again. All of our friends are joining now, and I just want to say hi and happy 2019 and happy new year. Um, also, Ryan said that Justin Kabelka is going to need all of Evan's fruit, fri fruit flies in that <laughs> 180 <laughs> gallon. He's going to need every single one. Oh, so Justin's is that Justin from the Herpeticulture podcast? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Sorry, Suspense. Sorry Justin. If, or, yeah. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> Justin Kabelka, you know, Justin, I don't know. Smith, yeah, same person. We're all confused. Um, but back to our podcast roll call. That's not the wow. right word. Okay, our our most emotional <laughs> podcast of the first, of the whole year. Um, if it goes you, to if you watched it already, you probably uh, know what I'm talking about. But yes, the award for the most emotional podcast goes to Garrett Hartle. Oh, we should have a little pretend award thing. What would we give out? Um, beer, a microphone. Silver beer beer cans? It should be a microphone jammed in a beer can. <laughs> wow, that <laughs> sounds good. Okay. <laughs> well, well, you guys are all in contention for most emotional podcast of 2019. Now you know it's a competition. Yeah. Um, I cried. Yeah. I think it was, I think I probably cried one or two more times after that throughout the year, but I'm a river. Uh, oh, but that so one was good. like, if you didn't at least get choked up a little bit, you don't have a soul. Um, Cause it was wild. Like I recommend the Garrett Hartle podcast to anyone <laughs> who li has listened. I mean, who listens to us? <laughs> Sorry. Who can hear us right it's now? It's like there was no, there was, it really didn't even need us. It was like you were watching, just hearing someone's life. And it was the most interesting life <laughs> ever. Like, it's funny because right now you see what he does right now. It's like, oh, he's a snake breeder. Um, in, in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. Like, Simple. That's Cool, regular, well, right, not man. regular, yeah, you know, but just day. like not, yeah, not regular, regular for us, not regular for anyone else in the right. whole entire world. But, yeah. but you know, to all of us, like, okay, cool, great, can't wait to learn about your super doors and all that. But then you learn this man had a whole life before Pittsburgh. Well, like, and lives. let me know or let me get out there the fact that like the reason why that happened. Is because like we were gonna have him on and talk about like breeding retics or something like that, and then what what always happens happened. Um, we get off topic. <laughs> no, no. What always happened happened is that like he was on another podcast, so he was on NPR, and then he was on NPR again before we booked out like three months in advance. He was on NPR like twice. I did in not realize two that. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So that forced us to be like. 
well, we don't want to put the same thing out there. And we discussed it. And I was like, are you open to like talking about your whole life? And I w- didn't know. Did you know that- when you asked him that? Anything? I did not know his life was that fucking crazy. <laughs> so we really got lucky. Yeah, I don't want to reveal too many tidbits, but I want to like reel in people who haven't. Yeah, I feel like, like anyone could listen to that. Like Ryan said, like I told he told non snake people to listen to it because yeah. like I mean, okay, he was like Indo- in Indonesia. Or people who are interested in traveling. Too. He was in Indonesia during like a tsunami, right? Would you call it Indonesia? Yeah. Would you call it a tsunami? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said something else. Okay. <laughs> he like nearly survived that. Oh, I wish I could remember. There's so much more, and I'm totally blanking on all of it. I know he like drove in a car across country a bunch and like lived out of his. Yeah, van. he lived. He lived across like the U.S. with a mouse in a bird cage as oh, a pet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just lived out of his car for months on end. And he also like trained horses and broke his hip or did something got himself hurt training horses and yeah crazy and remember he got really sick and he went to mexico when he was like 14 or something yeah he would just cross the border (laughs) he would just cross the border and he has so many just had so many animals as a child just ridiculous crazy life we're not gonna do it any justice now i know we should have like written down the highlights but that would take a lot more organization (laughs) on our point yeah that we didn't do Okay, go listen to Garrett Hartle. And Garrett Hartle, if you're listening, thank you for the tears. <laughs> and, and we did have our second. Eric didn't make the cup because he was actually on the podcast in 2017. But we did have Owen from NPR this year. So that was our first or second cross-pollination of uh, <laughs> NPR from the ground up. And then I was on NPR Probably not too long after that. I don't remember exactly. But so, yeah, shout out to those guys. And then what else do we have around that time? Um, Did you put him over there because it's at the same time? I was confused. About yeah, that. yeah. So. Okay. So then um, we had Brendan Fowler on, which was a different subset of the snake community that we hadn't really explored. Um, if you don't know already, Brandon Fowler lives in California and does a lot of educational um, snake things, whether it's a birthday party, I said that weird birthday party, birthday or, or a library or an old folks home or whatever it may be. <laughs> um, he does more driving and traveling than like, I even imagine after the podcast, like after talking to him for two hours, I was like, okay. And then I'm friends with him on Facebook, and I swear he never stops. Like, every day he's like, got this party over here. got this thing over here and this thing over here. Like, four more. He, um, like, he, it's I, constant. I don't know how he does it. I talked to him a couple weeks ago, like, actually before the holidays. And he said that he, like, presented to altogether 500,000 people. So, like, one-on-one, like, he talked to that many people how did how did he keep track of that <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he reached five hundred thousand. that's crazy in a year yeah that's nuts so that's a lot of i think oh it's man a lot of hands he probably he, i think he <laughs> I think says he... <laughs> he says the numbers in the in the episode so check it out but they're crazy he goes all the way throughout california and yeah that's not an easy state to travel in and um, someone who keeps their reptiles in good shape when doing that. I think that is a business that a lot of people get in and kind of lose the quality. You know, they start going for quantity over quality and their snakes aren't cared for as much. Um, but he has done a great job of, you know, still caring for his snakes and keeping them, you know, to not just like healthy, but in industry standards, I guess I could say, because, you know, most of the people he's showing don't know anything about snakes and like Mm -hmm. they wouldn't really know what a not so great looking snake is because they've never seen one, but he's keeping them um, in a way that, you know, we as I I don't want to say we, that sounds so high and mighty, but like (laughs) that snake people would, I don't know what I'm losing my words. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. That was not the word I was thinking of. 
Um, but yes, he keeps them looking good. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he withholds a standard that we can be proud of in a way. Because he's getting out there and actually educating people and actually changing people's mind, you know, one by one. And, you know, that's a big deal. And a lot of us don't really have the patience, balls, time, <laughs> care to do it. I mean, it needs to be done by someone. And I'm glad he's out there doing it. And it needs to be done by more people. And I think everyone collectively can try you know, as um, we can all do our part in getting out there and reaching people in whatever way we can, whether it's like podcasts, YouTube (laughs) videos, and that ends up being kind of preach to the choir stuff, but getting out there and physically giving presentations to people is, you know, that's just next level. It's actually like on the ground, you know, boots (laughs) on the ground to new people who, who don't necessarily like reptiles. So that's, legitimately changing people's and spiders minds. and other stuff because someone on youtube is coming to see our videos is coming because they like snakes already let's be honest someone who's finding out the podcast they already like snakes yeah and so we can play on their like of snakes and talk about snakes for two hours <laughs> but <laughs> but brandon's meeting you know not snake people every day and trans and just like I'm sorry, not getting bogged down by, I'm sure, the same questions okay. over and over and over. Um, and, like, I teach little kids, and they ask me things 20 times a day, and I'm losing my mind at the end of it sometimes. So I can't imagine, you know, there's probably a bank of 60 questions that people ask him, maybe 100. I'll go, go up to there's 100 different questions people ask him but those 100 questions are rotated over and over and over over. it's like i was at a reptile show (laughs) yeah yeah it's like a reptile show every day which is funny because like as much as i love reptile shows that would be like a version of my hell once you get to a certain point it's (laughs) doing a reptile show every day straight hell yeah and um mike mentioned um what's it john michaels dry mark on um we had him on uh, black tail Kribos, yellow tail Kribos, obviously indigo snakes, Mexican Kribos. Had an awesome conversation. He even talked a little bit about tortoises and barons racers, which were really, really. Oh yeah, cool we got into me. barons a little bit. I after still that. every time I see one, <laughs> you I got like a little them. Into it. They're awesome, but I really, really want a blue one or a green one. If someone would gift one to me, <laughs> yeah, that's how great. it works. I'll get one one day. We'll see. But yeah, I loved having him on the podcast. Obviously, an awesome breeder. Also, his snakes were in American Horror Story. So if you watch the newest oh, yeah. American Horror Story Apocalypse, his snakes, which um, throughout the whole thing, there's a Texas rat, which I believe is in the intro, which mm-hmm. is fucking awesome because it's a Texas rat and it's in the intro. You know, a snake that is sold for $25 and no one gives a shit about. Is an American horror story, so take that ball python, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, there was also some Kribos in it. There was um, some Kribos that they milked for venom, which is always fun um, because that's realistic. And they were also uh, just like throwing venom on people and fucking them up. It was yeah, sweet. well, that's typical but, uh, American horror story fashion. Yeah, they are all about the facts. But, uh, yeah, they used his animals for that, and they looked awesome. So shout out to that. If you didn't know, now you know. They made watching that. I mean, we eventually got uninterested in the series, but it, it made it watching it cooler. It was a great <laughs> Knowing that beginning. they're his animals, but there's so many snakes in them that it's awesome. And they were in probably more towards the beginning. I don't know if we saw any later in, in the season. There, uh, but, not that I remember. Yeah. But that's a cool little side note. And then we had Dave Kaufman after that. You all know Dave? Nah, no one knows Dave. Herper's but, trilogy. Well, what's funny is that was a part of the um, podcast is being like, more people should know Dave. Because um, I felt like I've always known who he, he was, but obviously you're my sensei in the what? snake world. And so <laughs> I know what you know. I, you know... If you didn't know him, I probably wouldn't know him. But you already knew him, so I know who he is. But like, I feel like not every, not as many people know about Dave um, as they should. 
Well, the, he still has like 40,000 subscribers. Or yes, something. but it should be like 100,000. No, it should be a million and a oh, half. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, but the most emotional award went to Garrett Hartle. Weirdest podcast. Clearly. Goes to Dave Kaufman. Yeah, clearly cursed in every sense of the Is word. that the beginning of the curse? No. I don't no, know. I that think, was that was ooh, just the cursed that episode. That was just the most cursed. When was the, we should have Googled or not Googled. Wow. The curse. Yeah, we should have Googled <laughs> our own thing that no one cares about. A thing that we made up. <laughs> Just Google when oh, the yeah, curse that's started. That's not what this. I meant to say. <laughs> That'd be cool though if you could Google your last, their life events. You um, can if you're like famous. Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> when did I do this? <laughs> you married blah, blah, blah in 2006. <laughs> um. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, I wish we could figure out when our curse started. And if you don't know, if you're a new listener, we have this curse where if we tell anyone what the uh, who the next guest will be, then they even don't. if we announce it at the end of an episode, if we announce it, if we even if we literally like it happens a lot, if we make a post about the podcast, like before on snap or instagram no that one's not always but usually if we tell someone where i've even like given a hint and made the person guess because i was trying to find a work around around the curse and it still gets us maybe it's because we have dropped a lot of guests or maybe people have dropped out a lot more. i don't know <laughs> the curse if you if we tell you they don't come on so um but the Dave Kaufman episode was just cursed so much. Like, I don't even remember. Okay, so was it we couldn't get him on? Um, like, our internet, our internet was just being so shoddy and terrible. Like, I was, it was probably like half an hour before we got it on. Um, like, it was just not working. And then his internet cut out, right? It was just crazy. His yeah. internet cut out. His phone died. And My uh, nose started bleeding. And then Dave's nose started bleeding. Like some crazy, weird horror stuff. I swear no. someone had like a voodoo doll of one of us and was probably just like poking the heck out of that well, thing. Well, I mean, we have other things to be cursed about. I feel like, did he bring that curse? Or are we double cursed? I don't know. but Or was our curses coming together? <laughs> There's a convert cross pollination of the curses. <laughs> the super curse. But despite all, Demo, the, despite all the nose, I guess super curse. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Despite all the nosebleeds and phones dying and internet's dying and just craziness, it was still a great podcast. <laughs> I think the edit makes it okay. So if you if you're right here. Um, if you're here on download, if you get it on download, then I'm sure it sounds a lot better than it does on YouTube. So but if you want to see two people's nosebleeds, uh, if you're into that, oh, God. you can uh, watch. The Don't go just for that. <laughs> watch That's the weird. YouTube. Uh, Ryan said we're both het for bullshit. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's what we have to. That's literally what we're doing right now. <laughs> um, but uh. It was just great to learn about other parts of the world. Like part of the, uh, I was about to say part of the reason I do this podcast, but the reason I do this podcast is part of the reason why he. I was, about to say, part of, I was about to say, but we know the it's main the reason pay. is because <laughs> you make me do it. Um, but part of the reason why I act, not act, part of the reason why I am still interested in this podcast is like I said, like with Kathy Love, learning about history, but with people like Dave Kaufman, I get to learn about places of the world that I'm 99% sure I'll never go to. Wow, you're very adventurous. Uh, we've already talked about that I'm not, so. I want to go to Yap and nowhere else. Hi, I, Maya, by the way. I don't talk about that, mm -hmm. uh, but hi, Maya. See, now we can't curse your nieces here. Oh, no. Um, I bet this is your mom texts me. Nope. So. Um, sorry. But so Dave Kaufman has been, I don't know, all over Australia, right? He's been all over every place you ever wanted to hurt. <laughs> so, yeah, he's been. Yeah, which is why I'll never go there. But I like hearing about it. It's just it's the benefit of hearing and not getting bug bites all over. He basically and, travels for a living. 
Yeah, and eats crazy right. food and just like dries out at night. And <laughs> it's just great to hear um, about all the different things he's learned on his travels and things he's seen. Yeah. So that was a really great. And he's as far as his content on YouTube, it's straightforward and legit. You can't say that for everyone. So. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's why I think more people should know and should be subscribing to Dave Kaufman. So if we haven't, you know, plugged him enough, go find Dave Kaufman. There you go. Um, okay. They're probably already all subscribed to Dave, Dave Kaufman, Kaufman, but we'll probably. go with that. We're an afterthought after Dave Kaufman. <laughs> Next um, one. Our next person on the list. And by the way, guys, we're going in chronological order. I mentioned um, that earlier. Yeah, I just want to mention again because people keep mentioning things that are coming later. Um, next one, Paul Rosalie, Woo. which, um, like, this is so sad to say, like most of the people we have on the podcast, I didn't know who he was before we had him on the podcast. <laughs> um, Joe obviously does. We all know I'm the noob. So and, he, but, he obviously is, well, he's the author of Mother of God, which is an awesome book that any, like, Anyone who's interested in reptiles, into adventure, into being in the jungle, into getting life-threatening infections should check out. And then we had, wow, and then he's notoriously known for the Eaten Alive show on Discovery Channel, where he decided to, well, <laughs> you got to listen to the podcast. I don't know if he decided, but it was an idea and it was chosen that he was going to get eaten by a green anaconda. And basically, everyone in the reptile community in hated the this show because it was painting reptiles in a really bad light. And, I mean, there was painting them as being man-eaters and all this bad publicity. And then the whole public hated it because the snake never <laughs> ate them. So... <laughs> He's Everyone, getting hated for both so sides. So he was hated in the reptile community before it came out because people were mad about the image. And then it came out, and then he got even more hate just from everyone because he didn't get eaten by it. And just, it was all, I mean, a learning opportunity, I think, <laughs> for him, which he describes in the podcast, which is awesome. So I would certainly give that a listen and check out all of his things on social media because... He is out there living in the Peruvian Amazon and doing, you know, expeditions and bringing people on tours and ecotourism, which is helping the local economy as well as, you know, he's trying to preserve the Amazon. So, because I'm cheesy, if I had to, I would give Paul Rosalie the award <laughs> for the most transformative episode because you don't know how many people like messaged us or reach out to us after that episode and was like oh i don't hate him like or you know or like oh like or people talking shit without listening to the podcast and it's like hey man you gotta listen, you gotta listen. before you say this hey, just listen and watching, it may be no different um but yeah it was just it was cool to transform people's minds about him and I'm happy we were able to get, you know, more people on his side because he is doing such good work. Again, another thing I would never do in my we're life. We're just sitting here on our, you know, philosophical couches doing nothing, Bane. You're doing a bad job. Yes. You're giving us a bad name. Yet he's out there. Meanwhile, you know, he's actually out there doing things and he tried. He kind of swung and missed hardcore, but. He's out there doing the things that need to be done or that should be done. And quite frankly, we're not doing much, are we? Yeah. Um, but sorry, Maya and your other niece want us to say hi. This hi, is Aaliyah. A for, hi, Aaliyah. There you go. <laughs> um, but also with Paul, it was just another thing good to learn about the TV aspect of it, you know, because we snake shows pop up here all the time. So that was our first guest who was like, on the television, and we got to learn more about Omni that. Television, yeah, and that's where I coined the term "inside snakes." <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Do you remember when I said that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You only like in inside snakes. <laughs> we like inside snakes. I really want to. We need to go to the Amazon. We'll go there eventually. Um, I don't know if that'll be a wee trip. 
Okay. That's fair. Who wants to go? I mean, you can leave me in, like, I'm sure there's some resort there. Yeah, yeah. You can leave me there. And you can go with Paul um, out there and explore and sleep, you know, in tents that get. How can I get malaria, diarrhea, and almost die out in the Peruvian (laughs) Amazon? Let me take that tour. (laughs) Let's go and let's find an. I mean, the one that they got in that video was actually the largest recorded anaconda. And they just, like, skimmed by that. They didn't really give a shit to the Discovery Channel. But 17-foot anaconda, I believe. Fucking huge. Freaking huge. Stinking huge. (laughs) But, I mean, it's an amazing feat. But, unfortunately, the show wasn't about that amazing feat. It was about him. Getting eaten alive in a two hundred thousand uh, dollar suit. <laughs> yes, which wow. is very interesting. It shows you how much money uh, television has. To That's a multi-million dollar budget. It's crazy. Probably doesn't happen much anymore. Next one, we had Josh Willard of Josh's Frogs. That one was huge. That was. I think that was our next like top. Um, listen to after Justin Kavelka's like that mm-hmm. one really really shot up um, and I just didn't realize how much influence Josh's frog like has over the reptile community but it's a whole bunch he <laughs> was way too humble to get the oh idea gosh. of how like massive yeah I mean it's a massive business I mean 50 employees <laughs> and it's like we tried to kind of get the overview of how it started, how he runs his business. And like, if there's anyone who has stayed true to the hobby and scaled at the same time, so scaled, meaning they build their business to a point of like, you know, 50 employees is pretty, pretty intense. You know, that's way past any of our hobbyist breeders who employ, even the really large ones, you know, may employ five people really at the most. You're looking at like, and next level <laughs> Looking at beer burps because that's what that yeah. was because <laughs> that's what that was but um yeah so he's really a- he's a good businessman like despite how humble he was like he kept seeming to like to downplay to his not blame it but to you know give it to luck and like i right, just yeah he he's just like, like i just got in it and i did this and this i'm like no like you are a good businessman like he's able to like you said stay true to the reptile community and amphibious community but also amphibious is that not the word no we can go with that <laughs> what's the word i should be saying well, just amphibian community. Oh, I don't know why. Okay. Because um, amphibious is just like a trait that you put on, like like a boat can be amphibious, which means that it's on land and water. So it's like, yeah, amphibian makes more sense. <laughs> but you can just say hurt people. Yeah. Um, but there also trying to reach to other people. Like, you, oh, I don't remember the name of the thing. The little garden things that like people, gardenscapes are... I don't know. Yeah, like, like he has a way of diversifying and keep keep on like expanding his market. So it's like right. if we sell things just for corn snakes, I mean, I don't know how well we would do. But the thing is, like, maybe what I use for corn snakes can be used for rats or mice or, you know, he thinks of ways of expanding. So he does like these elven, you know, mini I don't know, terrestrial scapes of plants and stuff, but it's like, yeah, it's a whole little niche of people that are going to buy his stuff. And I don't know how you have your like feel on the pulse of all this stuff, but he seems to. And when he like starts a new venture, he'll hire someone who's like an expert in that and be that like that be their task like so oh he, yeah like he doesn't fuck around like, yeah he all. has that person who does that he has this person who's really good at you know every every little thing um and despite being such a big company i bet he knows the names of most of the people that work for him and like it still seems to feel this kind of family aspect despite it being 50 people i think that's an interesting like observation that he you know, he started out and although he was doing it himself, he wasn't like 
the number one, you know, he wasn't that well versed in the frog breed. You know, he was just mm-hmm. doing fruit flies. So he brought on a guy who knew all of his shit. Right. So it's like, yeah, that's so he always hired people who know more than him, which I think is an important thing that maybe we can take into consideration if we ever try to grow a business like that, you know, like, cause I mean, you have to be a business person first and it sucks with, I mean, he doesn't even sacrifice as far as live animals. I mean, they're all kept appropriately like any small breeder would keep them. And that's really rare for a place as big as that. Yeah. And, and it's just nice that he ethically. was even wanted to talk to us when he's and running such a big business. To like, be just hanging out for two hours. Is right. Cool. And I think we even went over. Yeah. Can you stop burping? I know, I can't <laughs> God. Stop. As you drink more beer, that will make you burp more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So it was really great. If you want to learn about businesses and expanding, and also someone who just is a humble, good, down to earth person listen to the josh's frogs as episode. Like we were at tinley and he was right across because i went with eric burke and matt minatola and eric burke's table was right across from josh's frogs and josh was like the main person moving everything for like 16 hours like the like the CEO first day of this company and with the all these employees day. and he was the one doing it and like he was doing so much work it was just crazy and it was just like damn uh, he's just bad. most ass. people would not be doing that like once no. you you know have enough you have people so under employees you, you would to stop, do that. he had right? like 10 employees there you know just have them do it but no but he's in he's it a bad and ass. that makes him you know a good person <laughs> yes uh-huh. it does well, in your eyes, at least. Okay. <laughs> I agree, but... <laughs> that sounded... It's not the only thing. <laughs> weird. Okay. Um, oh, so the next um, group we had on that was big for us were um, Greg and Chris from the TV show Scaled on... Which one? <laughs> it's Animal Planet as well. On Animal Planet. Clearly, we have an Animal Planet... Uh, well, no, no. Well, Paul was Discovery Channel, oh. which is oh, which Never owns mind. Animal Planet. They're but, all like connected. Yeah, and Marco Shea was on Animal Planet too, but that's for for for, for foreshadowing. Um. Oh wait, I forgot to say something. <laughs> Your niece mind just brought, reminded me. Total offsides, but I have to thank Joe's dad for my Christmas present. So we both get wiggly chairs. Like, wow, I can't believe nobody yeah, yeah, noticed. Yeah, yeah, um, all right, keep on. Thing. with the, I talk no about it all the time, not chair. being a really chair, but your niece brought up the fact that it's so much shorter. Yeah, well, it is. you know, we can't <laughs> all be the king of the castle here. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's still a wiggly chair, and I'm happy to have one. Thanks, wiggly chair. Thanks, Jim. Wow. Um. Okay. Sorry. So, Greg and Chris from Scaled, you give a little intro, babe. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think it was just crazy because we, you know, watching the show, it is like a very, it's weird because it is oriented to younger people, but at the same time, like if you talk to them or get like, they're very normal dudes and like okay, funny. Wait. What you just said makes no sense. You said the show's oriented to young people, but no, the guys are yeah. normal. What? No, no, no. <laughs> Which means like they're very um like well the the weenie and the bunghole challenge that they did. Oh. Where they try to put drop a hot dog through the hole of a keg, which is called a bunghole. I did not know that. I don't like that. I believe that's what it Can is. Can you call it a barrel hole? I like that better because <laughs> it's a barrel hole. But and it's like the weird and they have literally a black printed chicken everywhere so they have a big black cock in a lot oh of the God, scenes stop. of <laughs> of scale what that's a chicken um, but that's a male it's chicken. very they, they do silly things to obviously you know it it's funny but they are like they're not actors in any way they're no. you know just regular and they are actual like reptile people yeah um they're just regular cool. guys and it was and nice. they're canadian so yeah, they're nicer so they're, than regular I was people just say that Dang it. Sorry, they also cool. drank with us, which I was kind of surprised. Yes. Oh, we did. We were having tech, 
technical difficulties in that one too, Ooh, though. That was rough. We like couldn't hear um one of the, half the time. That, that Ottawa internet wasn't great or whatever. Yeah. Are they in Ottawa? Somewhere, Somewhere in, in Canada. But it was Vancouver, Ottawa. No, I think it's Ottawa. It was Don't again nice to learn about other places. We um we learned about how Canada works and how not how Canada works. <laughs> how Canada works. <laughs> how We're snakes American. And keeping and laws and rules and shows and all that in Canada. And the whole process of making the show. Which of making, yeah, the, making grueling. the show Scaled. So yeah. plug, if you haven't yet, check out Scaled on Animal Planet. I um, think there's like probably eight or nine on Animal Planet now. I haven't checked in a while. Yeah. Um, but I'll, at this moment, I do want to like also... Honorable missions to all of our <laughs> foreign shows because that's just so cool that we get yeah. foreign people on. So we didn't put. Um, sorry. I don't think Casper's from this year. I think he was actually from last year, from 2017. Yeah, wow, so that from Denmark ago? or Martin, who we had on from Denmark as well. Awesome, so. MGR Reptiles. Check him out. Yeah. Um and um Lawrence. Lawrence, yeah, from uh, he was in Ireland. Yes, and we had the guys from um. Reptile and Chill. Oh, we were on Reptile and Chill. Yes, we did a cross pollination. Is that <laughs> the universal sign of cross pollination <laughs> with the guys from Reptile and Chill in um, England? Um, so that what was that three or four foreign shows. I want. Oh, the scale guys live in Calgary. Mike said so. Sorry, so not guys. Ottawa. <laughs> Sorry, we're um, stupid Americans. It's one of those ones that aren't exactly the big. It's not Toronto or Vancouver, but the other ones, you know, not Montreal <laughs> either. Okay, one of those. That's like saying like not L.A. or Hollywood or New York. Yeah, like that's know. what everyone outside Hollywood, of America, huh? okay. all they know, I feel like it's L.A. and New York. Um, but so that Joe's like big thing next year is conservation. My big thing is more foreign people. <laughs> <laughs> I want um, more foreign people this well, year. Well, you can send those messages. <laughs> okay. Google Translate. No, obviously they have to say, speak the same yeah. language. Um, but I just think it's so cool. It's it's a timing thing that's difficult. Yes, you end up great. doing a show on Sunday or Saturday. We want more foreign people, but like, especially UK and the, the Reptile and Chill guys are killing it. Oh, did I not mention them in the be I don't think I mentioned them in the beginning. I literally just said it two minutes ago. Oh, my God. We're idiots. Sorry, guys. No, Reptile you are. Chill. I literally sorry, just said Reptile and Chill from England. Like, no, I and you know. Said, yeah, but we in the were beginning of there. the show, we mentioned all the shows, and we didn't oh, mention okay, them. Okay, okay, okay. Well, there we go. Now you've done it like twenty times. I should have. So, shit down. thank you, Danny and Dan and Mike, um, for having us on. For having us on, and they're getting so many UK guys on and stuff that like we just yeah, need to start in the European. We just need to go through their list and. <laughs> Ask like four months later, um, because they're getting all the England people that we might not know about. Um, but I definitely want more foreign people in the future. Foreign people. Foreign people. So yes, thank you, Lawrence and Martin and Casper. Um, and I guess because Marco Shea counts. Yes, foreign, Mark Marco Shea counts as a foreign person. Um, so five. We're gonna. Yeah. I have one on deck, a foreign person for you. Ooh, ooh la la. Oh, okay, calm down. <laughs> Not that fucking serious, okay? Lay Do not curse for five minutes. All right, who um, we got? Okay. Ooh, this was, it's so surprising. I mean, I don't know. Because obviously he's huge in his community, but I didn't know how, like, deep his community go. Meaning, like, I didn't know there were that many people involved in blood python short tails that kind of thing i didn't know it was such a like steady community so our next guest was matt minatola and he was the highest played episode of the year i think he still is right now yeah that's what i'm saying of the year oh which... <laughs> duh because the year is over right yeah and i was like what the and we did it towards the tail end of the year it was like was it october november when we did it and it's know. number one downloaded and I was just like so surprised, and then, uh, and then we we got the award of Matt Minatola's favorite podcast, so that was nice. 
a whore to us. So, <laughs> yes, Matt Matola really likes being on ours. <laughs> cough, cough, <clears throat> dig at NPR. Yeah, um, if no one knows that, then oh, it's an inside joke. Okay. Uh, but yes, it was great having Matt on and not anything. And to, having a person in, in person. person. Again. That was our first Philly in person. Philly in person. Yeah. And a true Philly person in person. What does that mean? Like true, he grew what's up a in not Philly. true Philly. Okay. He grew up in Philly. Gotcha. But it was great to have our first in person. But um, we cannot continue this podcast without acknowledging our favorite in person, in person person. <laughs> in person person. So uh, <laughs> give me a drum roll here. <laughs> Our favorite in-person podcast of all time, not just 2018, all time, forever and now and past. Wow, that was terrible. Oh. Goes to Evan. <laughs> Carpet, Condro, Dark Frog, ice Fruit cube. Flag, Cartel, Ice Cube. Goes to Evan. He... I think that we brought in the new year with the one with him and Dave. Last year? Yeah. Which was, which is still one of our top podcasts. Psychos. And Y'all yeah, shouldn't. they were, they were holding snakes that they shouldn't have been holding. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah. And Evan just always came through for us when we needed it. And he was always funny. And he was always <laughs> just like a good person to talk to. And he um, provided us with different outfits that I always loved. In different styles of Evan. <laughs> oh yeah, we got like yeah, we it's got the, more the facial. We've hair talked about this. We got the, the fedora Evan. Yeah, you got the, the big braided, white, the big white tee uh, Evan. <laughs> like the braided beard, the braided Evan. beard Evan. Up. The ba baseball cap ball. So many different things. But the best thing about him is he was always a good friend and always great to talk to and always. Kept us entertained. Yeah. Knows his shit. People love fucking Evan episodes. Evan, he was real. Him just going he also off. gets an award for the most real. Like, I just feel like he's the most like, I'm gonna give it to you straight. Yeah. Type person. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to do more. It's gonna be ridiculous. Um, he also took us fishing and oh, yeah. that's he, side stuff. We both just, caught catfish when we went fishing. Yeah, with he Evan. just was a fun person and Dallas. He was. You're talking him. Yeah, Brian <laughs> just said it. Because I was just about to say, you're talking him in past tense. Like this is his funeral. But, yeah, Ryan we, Cox. What we say at his Evan's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people talk about this, these aspects of Evan at his <laughs> funeral. <laughs> Um, well, it's past since because we don't live in Dallas anymore, and it was in 2018, which is past. Oh, um, but whatever. We love Evan. <laughs> Thank you, number one fruit fly breeder, Ice Cube. <laughs> You're the first person to get two awards on this show. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait, what other award did he get? Oh, you gave him two right now. Yeah, he got wow, our. Dude, it was our, he was our favorite in person, in person person, and um. The thing that keeps these valuable okay. is not giving out a bunch of them. It's about only giving out a few. I only give out a couple, but I got right, good man. ones. Transformative, emotional, weirdest, <laughs> and then Evan gets one. Okay. 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 So Next wait one. a second. We were trying to talk about Matt Minatola, and you hijacked it with the Evan. Sorry. But yeah, that was that was a great episode. And Matt Minatola's, yes. <laughs> and like we said, highest grossing. And it's like nothing bad about matt but i had no expectations <laughs> that this was going to be our highest one like no no i um, knew me, i knew it was going to be big i wasn't expecting it to be our biggest i was like oh no one's going to ever pass josh's frogs because it was just going going well first i was like no one's going to pass justin kobilka because it just kept going and then i was like no one's going to pass josh's frogs and then matt just like blew him out the water um and so, so that was great but like matt mm -hmm. is someone who really really pays attention to what he's working with um he's been focused for a long period of time yeah which, what it takes to build a following like that which i mean honestly another person that we didn't know would have that big of an impact was jason nelson mm -hmm. and so jason nelson works with Patofis, and we were like well i mean some people are into him but I, mean, I was like, not many people this know. This is going to be more for me type of right. a thing. Right, it's like, oh, he doesn't have much of a 
big social media presence. Like, you know. No, he murdered it immediately. Oh, my God. Jason Nelson killed it. Yeah. And, I mean, it makes sense because he produces so many snakes. I forgot what he said in the interview. But, but something crazy. A crazy number of pine snakes, bull snakes, gopher snakes, all that stuff. Crazy number. Much bigger than I ever thought. And just an amazing um, an amazing breeder. And... I was really surprised with the amount of people and the new people that he brought to the podcast. So it's like, thank you, Jason. Jason. Yeah. My favorite part of that episode um, was talking about the different ways to get snakes to eat. That's always like a fun thing to hear people's new ways. But he had, I think, the longest and the most varied. A lot of them. Lists. Yeah. I mean, it was like rubbing the pinky in the dirt. Yeah, like, he believes in going outside and rubbing it in the dirt. And it, and it worked. Them, yeah. And so he just was a very out of the box thinker, or he really just went through the he's depths had to got of a research. Lot of fucking snakes to get feeding. To get these. feeding, and so he's just tried a lot of stuff. Everything. Um, and so it was very funny, um, and interesting to learn about the different ways he did the stuff. And yeah. that was a really big, uh, that was really big downs downloads. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun show. And then. Randall Berry was a big one for me, someone from the zoological community, someone who, I mean, he talked about the indictment of Tom Crutchfield during the interview. Come on, you got to listen to it. And <laughs> he was just wild. And you said and Randall just, Berry, but you need to put Randall Berry slash, slash Ryan, slash Ryan Rumbly. Because, and he was on the week before that as well. So. Yes. Um. Yes, Ryan Rumbley and um, Randall Berry are working together to open up the Reptile Garden. Reptile Garden in uh, Hot, Hot Springs, Springs, Arkansas. Arkansas, so, this year at some point. I believe it's like 20,000 square feet, crazy reptile mecca of sorts. You know, that's going to be comparable to a smaller zoological community. I mean, like a zoological facility. And I mean, it's going to... Be in a place where tourists are going to be able to experience reptiles that they never knew existed. And it's basically fucking going to be awesome. It's exactly what we need in our life. Right. <laughs> um, Just like, and you know, it was like we stuff. had him on to talk about the reptile gardens, but then we got so much more, which like way more than we could have ever like asked for or wondered. But he was another person who's been in this for a while. He's had the zoo side and the hobby side, which I think mm. is also very interesting. And, like, he worked in the zoo and the hobby. I mean, he worked for Crutchfield. I mean, that's such a that, insight. Yeah. He worked for Crutchfield the year, basically, he, he was working for him when he fled to Belize. Like, he was just there and was like, where's Tom kind of thing. Like, and he tells the story. It's awesome. But, um, and I'm sure just the amount of stories that he has that he didn't tell are just. Are just wild. Yeah. Oh my God. But it was nice. Um, Cause a lot of times when we have zoo people on there, it's a little bit like hush hush. Um, and so it was nice to get, I feel like he like opened that door a little bit more to the zoo world, which is something, you know, we'll never know about, but it, it's very interesting. So Randall was just very open and he smoked a cigarette on the podcast, which I'll never forget. That's his award. If Oh, but you said I, got, I can't give out anymore. But if I did, that would be his. Um, and Ryan Rumbly for uh, also coming on and just being in. Ryan Rumbly is another person who's very real. It's a throwback to, I feel like, a lot of the older episodes that we used to do with Dave, with Evan, with Austin. Like the in-person interviews where we would get drunk or like the early <laughs> <laughs> or earlier God, guest interviews. Do we want to go back to that? <laughs> I, I feel like that was more of like, we were just bullshitting, having fun type of thing. I feel like we've gotten we got a, a little bit more, more serious. We've except got a when little it's just bit more us. tightened right now, up. We're not serious or tightened up at all. Right. But when it's just us, we go back to that a little bit. I yeah. Mean, sometimes it gets loosey goosey and you don't want it to be too loosey goosey because it may be fun for us, but I mean, I want people to listen to it, but so, <laughs> So, like, yeah, that was kind of, 
it was it's nice to throw a couple of those in there. To just get like, a little silly. The last one with Riley, you know, we're relaxed, we're just hanging out. Those are those are always really fun. So yeah. you know, the ones with your friends are always the most fun for and us. Randall Berry isn't even like wasn't even our friend, but he Well, Ryan, we had him on the week before, True, so, so it was, it was like, like he's friends. already his friend. And plus, I mean, I've met him multiple times because we lived in Dallas and he used to come down to a lot of the Dallas area shows. So it's not like I didn't know him, but we didn't know each other that well. But we spent two hours with him the week a before. A week before. Yeah. And then spent, yeah. So it was really great having them on. Um, do, 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 one that we do, do, didn't do, put in our list, which I, I can't oh, I believe you, go for you didn't me. put this in the list. But um, multiple people are talking about in the chat. Was Howard Redding? Oh, Howard! Why didn't you put that the in the binder list, babe? episode? The, the, I don't even know. Was that in this year? We got to double check. Oh, uh, could it have been twenty seventeen? It very well could have been this year, but Evan gave an assist. Someone, on that fact, one someone, uh, us. fact check us, please. Yeah. Um. But yes, Howard Redding, another real person, who oh, okay. <laughs> He whispered that to me like y'all can't see that he just whispered to me that he has has to pee oh sorry download people um howard redding um doesn't care who you are what you are he's gonna be howard redding and you can like it or not i find it hilarious and so while he was doing the podcast he was just cleaning snakes i mean we were definitely his background entertainment at one point, he just like let the phone fall on a binder, and that's what we were looking at. And uh, that, like, it was just great. It was pure comedy and <laughs> just letting life go. But he will tell you anything, um, the way you want to hear it or not, and that's something to appreciate. He's not going to sugarcoat it. He's not going to, you know, cover up anything. He's real about all. That he uh, has tried and worked with, and it's great to know. And he knows his stuff. He's really, you know, trying to produce the best things um, for the community, and that's something to uh, acknowledge. Talk about Howard still? Yes. I saw a post on Facebook that he said he's like selling most of his collection. I don't know how true that is. Wait, what? He's also a jokester, <laughs> prankster. That no, is something I mean to it's learn. probably true, but. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it on here, obviously, even though I don't know why I brought it up, but Okay. I don't cool. Know. I don't I don't know the whole the whole down low, so so I'll we'll, I'll have to talk to him about it. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Cool. <laughs> and I'll give you a drum roll on this one. Oh no. All right. So uh, NPR. <laughs> well, you failed at my drum roll. Uh, I drum roll to all right. So it's not hey, what a drum roll's for. I really didn't think this would ever happen. And I freaked the fuck out. And I felt I can't even, I don't know, for like the six hours. It, it was weird because you were, you're were already away for the holidays. And, um, and I was just so crazy. For like six hours after that podcast, I was just so excited that we had Marco Shea. Six hours? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, probably the rest of the whole day and the next day. But just, well, I don't know. I just hit him up on Facebook and he got back to us and he went on the podcast and he's like the nicest guy ever. But um, so NPR did like a review of last year episode kind of on, during their holiday um episode and they went through like some of their favorite podcasts and i mean it was just nice to hear how impressed they were that we got mark o'shea so thank you guys for enjoying wait repeat that um they posted some of or yeah, who? they posted they talked about some of their favorite podcasts from the Who's year they? npr oh. eric and owen <laughs> I missed all of that. I was trying to type and was not multitasking. I'm sorry. Oh, someone's not a podcast listener. I don't listen to NPR. I'll oh, be straight up. Oh, shit. You don't listen to anything. I don't listen to anything. I, You're podcasts just dragging don't, along No, here. podcasts don't work for my brain. Yeah. Um, sorry. But uh, so it was nice. So thank you to Eric and Owen for Wait, they all put the us in their list of their it. top ones? Yeah, just Mark O'Shea. And then I didn't just, even think Owen listened. But at, but at the same <laughs> Well, he will listen when it's Marco Shea, but at the same, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same, 
but at at the same time, I was so impressed when they got Cam from Bushmaster. So that's really like their. I mean, that was by far like my favorite episode of the year as far as what they put out. Also, the herpetolo- herpetological highlights on Dry Khan is really cool. Also, but I'm getting sidetracked from. Um, it's okay because I'm going to go more sidetracked, oh, and no. I know this is like totally off topic, but our keyboard is just going nuts out and someone asked a question in the chat and it's not like a person we know to message on Instagram later. So I just want to answer their question. Um, Burge, Berge, Berge. Oh, you're really going to do a it, corn snake question? Because I can't, I cannot. Okay. How it. long should you hibernate your corn before breeding? So hibernate, which means that you're not going to feed three weeks before you can put them into hibernation, you know, 50 degrees to 55 degrees. You should keep them in there for, I mean, typically, if we put them down... We do December to uh, March. Yeah, or February. Or February. February, Sorry. really. Sorry. But, December I mean, it could be two, three, four months. I mean, people do it differently, but I'd say at least two and a half months or so. So. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't type that. Our so that's like eight weeks. Going crazy. Yeah, at the very least. Okay, get on side chat. Mark O'Shea. Mark O'Shea. Uh, yeah, like you said, I wasn't there, and I've told multiple people I'm glad I wasn't there um, because I like I would be too – I can't ask a like silly n- novice question during that. Like I would never break up the Mark O'Shea <laughs> discussion for the question – you know, a question from the chat. Like it – he – yeah, I would probably just been silent the whole time or like just – it would have been bad. It – I sure. I'm glad I wasn't in it. Needless to say, <laughs> it was just I never thought that he would be so open to talking. Like we talked collectively after the podcast, before the podcast, and just I've never talked to someone where you can mention a species of pretty much anything or place. Pla- like or literally, place. it's like one word. And he could tell you a story, but not only does he tell you a story, but it's, he does it in like a cohesive way that actually gets a point across and is extremely intelligent on every single, you know, we talked about the natural history of Timor. Like he talked about the whole, you know, natural history of it and then going there and discovering and, you know, finding species in Timor and all these things. And it's like, just the amount of knowledge that he has is just crazy. And he has a new book out, which is like, I don't know. We need to get it. But basically. <laughs> we as in you. Yeah, and it has a lot of weird snake species in it. So Mike, who comments on the podcast all the time, but Mike, he um, he bought the book. And he's just like, yeah, you're going to see so many things that you haven't seen before and you're going to want to, is it, you're going to be looking up different things on the fauna. Is it store? I mean, is it narrative like his experiences with it or more just like, no, he has just pictures of so many species in there. And yeah, it's just, I think it's basically just giving you information on snakes of the world type of thing. Yes. Um, so that'll probably be add to the list of one of your favorite books after you read it, in addition to Lizard King. And uh, what's the other one you really like that you make me listen to? Um, Snake Charmer, Snake which Charmer. is the Joe Slowinski. Which one do you like more, that one or Lizard King? It's weird because I like the Snake Charmer one because it's like the tortured snake life. It's like a, like Joe Slowinski is very respected in herpetology, but a lot of his undergrad and graduate work, he was like in a room with a mattress on the floor with nothing around. Like he just lived a like dirt baggy, poor life and like would road cruise rattlesnakes and bring them into bars. And it was just kind of like a good, exposure to how much of a badass he was and then also um you know just an insight on to what her the field of herpetology is and done in a legitimate way is kind of like 
they're kind of their own type of crazy too, which is awesome to see. <laughs> like it's not only the regular rep reptile people who are a little a little crazy. It's also the academics are also a little a little interesting as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, so it was great to have Mark O'Shea and this author and just he has more experience and knowledge um than we will ever come close to. Um, he's another person who most of his life, the th things that he's done, I will never do and have no interest in doing like something someone would see as just like a pile of nothing that I'm going to just walk by or like actually avoid. He's like, Oh, let me go tear that up and see what's in there. Cause I know this random species of whatever might live in this type of, you know, bedding might enjoy living in here. So let me see what's growing. Um, no fear, no whatever. That really, it sounds stupid, but it's like, I realized that because he's like, okay, I, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go read. I'm going to go, or like, he's like, I'm going to go write or read. Like, I realized wow, his is job is just, <laughs> is just to get smarter. <laughs> like, he spends his whole life getting smarter <laughs> and you're just... How prolific of a statement, babe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, like his one goal in life is to know more about snakes and get smarter in every well, single that's way. That's your goal in life too. Yeah, but I do stuff in between. He like <laughs> I think like he will be in a lab somewhere. He will be in a collection somewhere looking at specimens from like 8 a.m. in the morning to 8 p.m. at night without blinking and without eating and not noticing. Yeah. Like, he's that serious about what he's doing. Which is awesome if that's what you do. And, so, you know, he had a Animal Planet TV show on around when uh, when Jeff Kerwin and uh, Steve Irwin and everyone, all the big Animal Planet shows at the time. So he had Mark O'Shea's Big Adventure. Um, someone who is as equally de dedicated and, you know, putting in the time would be uh, Jim Harrison. We had him yeah. and his wife. You like that transition? I thought it was wow. good. Uh, well, I know it's not school when I acknowledge it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it makes it that much better when you say it's cool. <laughs> But Jim, we had Jim and Kristen Harrison on who run the Kentucky Red Pals. Oh, side note, Stephen Poole. Thank you yes. for our gift. That was our first piece of like, I don't know, it sounds lame to say like fan mail. Because it's um, like, yeah, no yeah. one's, I feel like you have to be a child to be a fan. Stop, that's not true. These are no. all our fans. They're not our <laughs> they're fans. Friends. They're just our friends who they're are hanging friends. out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have 21 friends right now. We are watching <laughs> us that we're all hanging out. Um, but, Stephen Poole went to the Kentucky Red Pill Zoo and sent us a little something special because he knew we had Jim and Kristen on recently. Yeah, like they have this awesome Kentucky Reptile Zoo sewn bookmark. So I got an awesome bookmark, courtesy. For all your old books. Yeah, courtesy of Stephen Poole and the Kentucky Reptile Zoo. And that money obviously went to the Reptile Zoo. So thank you, Stephen, for donating to Kentucky Reptile Zoo and for giving us a bookmark. So... Yeah, I hope you had a great time. Wait, how weird is it and that that's, and Stephen that's weird Poole that he just, just got started here. watching right when we're talking about him? That's odd. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, like, I really, I would really love to make a video of their facility over there. I, can I want to go, but it also scares me. But um, they're those people who are. You know, among those people who are really doing great work that don't necessarily care about being recognized for it, you know, someone like Brandon Fowler, and um, we mentioned a couple other people that we felt the same way. The about. same way about. Um, but Jim and Kristen, like, I feel like they are people who had a mission when they started this, and it hasn't changed. You know, like, their mission was from a good, like, a good standpoint in the beginning to just care for these animals, produce more anti-venom for the world to have. 
and to you know shed light on some things that people might have different views on. And I think that mission has carried out. And I think they've only um, expanded their mission in a good way for the reptile community and for the world to see. And they have stuck to their humble roots, despite you know many media opportunities reaching out to them to try to, to try to change a little bit of who, who they are. But they've stuck to it, and I think that I respect them even more for that. Yeah, it's easy to give in at a certain point and but they didn't. Yeah. Yeah, they're really serious about sticking to their guns about certain things and they really hate I mean, you know, a lot of the casual things <laughs> that we see, on, you know, like they really make it a point to do the opposite of what we see that shines a light not in the most positive manner, but may get the most attention. I think it's easy to get attention with venomous snakes, unfortunately, and fortunately at the same time. I mean, it's everyone's attracted to, you know, the dangerous aspect of any snake, whether it's a big snake, whether it's a venomous snake and to play on that fear is easy to do. And to not do that is, you know, <laughs> respectable, it's something to be applauded so that more people can, follow that precedent. Right. And I think um, something I was thinking about recently, like, you know, part of their thing obviously is producing anti-venom. They keep such a large venomous collection and Jim's main thing, not main thing, but you know, thing, something he does day in and out is getting ven anti-venom and making anti-venom. Well, and getting then, venom get him, that then is given to labs yes, that make yes, anti-venom. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Um, but them. it's like, I feel like, after you know 10 years to an average person that could just become very monotonous and you could just become a, a i don't know that I think so. ever because uh, of after doing it for 10 years i think you could just be this is gonna sound weird but like you could become just a producer like this is what i do i make this for the people like that's my job I right right but your Stop life depends off. on you not coming off um, yes, obviously you still have to stay on guard on guard. I'm not saying you ever become relaxed or desensitized to it, but I think it could be like, you just continue to do that. But what puts them separates them from the rest is that they're not just like, okay, I'm going to come in. I'm going to make this continue pumping this venom. And that's all I do. They do more. They've learned about other countries and where their needs are when it comes to venom and how to help that and how to educate people and like they're they're doing more than what they need to producing venom that makes anti-venom is already like great like the world needs that they need more of that especially in those third world countries but that could be that could be i can't talk that could have been where they stopped it. they could have just become producers of that and that is their business you know and that is it but they went they took it a step further and they continue to take it steps further and he could, continues to escape death. <laughs> <laughs> is that the main thing? That's can, all. I mean, that's mind blown. Award. It, mind his, blown. Award. His heart nine has lives. stopped, I believe, seven times. Yeah, sorry. He gets so. the award for nine lives. A cat. Because <laughs> the cat award. The cat award. <laughs> <laughs> because he should be dead. <laughs> um, and you think with someone who gets venom from venomous snakes all day long, the reasons they should be de dead mostly involve snakes. And actually with his life, it has nothing to do with snakes. And mm -hmm. he's just led a very crazy life. And I obviously this goes without saying all of these podcasts that we're talking about in this episode, go listen to, but like really go listen to this one. Like, <laughs> and this is another one like the Garrett Hardall where it's like, you don't even have to like be into snakes. Like, yes, it's obviously just an interesting person. Yes. That's obviously that's like person. what we talk about, but like, he, I mean, his life is just crazy. I'm sure I could sit down like four of my friends and like they could watch that and be like, holy crap, you know, it, it's a cool life. That's just always a little like lanyard for us when they have an interesting life. <laughs> okay, explain to everyone what that means. Lanyap. I've explained <laughs> lanyard like 50 times on this. Uh, Quickly. If you're not from French or Louisiana stuff, Lanyap means extra. Yeah. So when they have an interesting life, it's a little extra for us. No, a little, I mean, a little bonus. It's weird because I want to hear on the podcast everyone's stories. And 
some people don't want to you know talk about personal stuff some people just want to talk about snakes or some people we just want to talk about snakes because we don't know anything about the snakes that they work with or things that they have going on so we want to talk about that so i mean it's weird like what do you think about the dichotomy of whoa big words sorry like some of our guests are very like reptile industry focused and then i feel like we started to get guests that weren't necessarily within they're in the reptile community but kind of like just on the outskirts as far as like zoo work or you know nonprofit work or mm -hmm. i mean is it about i don't know do we have a snake podcast or is it just about anything reptiles or yeah we still or like have, people's stories I mean, or people like breeding reptiles or it we're still a snake podcast i mean no obviously every sh like think about a tv show who they have their main theme that doesn't mean they don't, you know, vary from that theme. I think we're we a little bit, I think that's what keeps us expand. interesting. Yeah. Is that, you know, it's not always, okay, this is how to breed this. This is the the size cages they keep. This is no, not that that doesn't have its space. I think it's great because that's the meat. That's yeah. the meat and the things that people want to learn. Who, you know, people, I want our podcast to be. If Maybe we're not the best learning to be emotional and <laughs> educational and and pra and realistic. I want them to be able to take what they learned and put it into practice. Um, and so we have those that are like really practice based and like this where it's like I did this, I did this, I did this. It worked for me. Take it or leave it. And the person can you know go put that into their snakes. But then there's also like life things, and it's like. Uh, I live my life this way and this is how I am or, you know, keep what you keep, keep what you can keep. Mike brought that earlier. Like it might just be like a, some snake for the soul. Like what is <laughs> like those books we used to read growing up? What is it? Chicken, the, soup, for chicken the soul. soup for the teenage soul or something oh, like that. God, I, didn't just, read that but I mean, I like read 10 pages. My mom tried to make me read that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's like, we get a little chicken soup for the snake soul. <laughs> um, I just, I want to know like, the older generation stories more and more yeah and i think you know keeping our theme broad allows us to do all that so like our theme we're saying for this year yeah like i'm so sorry that we never like we have on a dart frog podcast and then we get maybe people who are interested in dart frog that never have a dart frog, Another dart frog like, person <laughs> i feel I mean, it, we might, it might come up again some people, no, well, yeah, yeah well but people, this is like a general reptile <laughs> yeah um, but then it's like, so our, our theme is conservation and we, we're trying to keep it broad. So it can include all that kind of difference. Oh, excuse me. Conservation and foreign people. That's yeah. our theme. <laughs> we should Thank put you. that, put that on a t-shirt conservation yeah. and foreign people. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we keep it broad so we can touch on all those different things that keeps it interesting for me. So Dude, like, dude, are you like, down with? Having Do like, like are you down? Only if they have crazy stories. No, like I people can't who imagine. Dive with sharks, I can't like, imagine up. a shark person <laughs> wouldn't have crazy stories. I don't know. Ask I our think... ask our friends, our twenty one friends who are watching. Do you guys <laughs> want shark people? I mean, I'm not gonna ask how to breed and what temperatures to keep some sharks at. But okay, you're sounding ridiculous. I know. Right I now. know. It was a joke. Gosh, Good laugh. On. Um, but. I don't know. We can't have too many because then it's just all stories, you know? Like, we can't have too many like that, but I think... But I want to know... I think people may be interested in the science of sharks or say even if we had, like, a dinosaur person on, maybe someone would be interested. A dinosaur in person <laughs> on? Yeah, because I'm just exist. getting weird. I'm just, just trying to weird. present... Oh, I would love a... Um... Archaeologist, you want an astrologist on to give you your sign? <laughs> no, I was wiping away a uh, uh, sand off. Bones. You want Ross from Friends to come on? <laughs> I what? I would. I think an archaeologist would be cool. But then I feel like we're getting like Joe right, Rogan. Man, let's like, all let's dig things. up the past. Yeah, yeah let's get it. Like, I would. Oh my god, I'd love that. Someone who's like gone to Egypt and wipes some sand off <laughs> bones. It's more about the wiping the sand off of the bones. <laughs> 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 
I'm just always fun. Like, but those are total selfish things that like we're just into and we want to like talk Listen, to someone I about think, that. I think sharks is a little bit less of a stretch. Well, but no, how are we going to message someone? Them, right? Hey, I, my girlfriend and I host a snake podcast. You want to come on and talk about sharks? Like, <laughs> yeah, or like if we talked about like big cats, Oops. but it's like I'm sure we could. I just don't know shit about big cats. I think that's an issue. That's the thing. It'd be all like me. It would be like because <laughs> like I don't. You're. It'd be like we simpleton always have questions. the one who knows stuff and the one who asks the simpleton questions. And I think people like that balance. <laughs> I hope people like that balance. But like with shark stuff, it'd be all noob. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon says a show about dogs. I don't know about no. that. We'd have Austin. We'd have Austin. Austin on, yeah. work on He Breeds Dogs. But, uh, but yeah, let's. All right. Let's get some shark people. Okay. What other cool Someone things? Someone said get the shark the tracking folks from O Search. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means, but we'll look it up. Because obviously we don't know anything about sharks. <laughs> Not. I barely even watch Shark Week. Evan we watches, just came up with this idea right now. Evan <laughs> watches Shark Week. He can tell us some shark people. <laughs> Evan's really into Shark Week. Oh, you, you, everyone is. You're just not. not you're just the one. I'm not who's everyone. Because <laughs> we were at Evan's house during Shark Week, and Shark Week was on, which is normal wow. in normal people's houses. So now she she equates Evan with the number one Shark Week person, not knowing that everyone's a Shark Week person. And that's why we should have shark people on the podcast. Is everyone a Shark Week person? Yes. Are you guys I mean, Shark Week I feel people? like if you have appreciation for snakes, it means that you have appreciation for an animal that a lot of people don't have an appreciation for. Therefore... You definitely have an appreciation. No. If doesn't, you see it a doesn't shark work that or, way. It doesn't work that way. Or a everyone lion. who likes like every, lions are easy. No, you loves can't a like. Lion, you don't love man. every rare thing. Like just because you love one rare thing doesn't mean you love just every rare thing. Even yeah, though sharks but, aren't rare. But. Yeah, but not a lot of people like snakes. I mean, people who like sharks don't necessarily like snakes. But I think people who like snakes more so like sharks. That's all. Because we're all interested in. I don't know what the basis of that connection is. <laughs> There's nothing. There's there is no basis. basis. You just it's did that. Um, but okay, Evan says Dr. Ian Malcolm. Write that down. Let's go for it. Writing it down. Thank Let's you, Evan. Yeah, and we need to get like Croc people as well. We haven't really. Yes, dealt with... I think Croc people. We have for some sure. monitor people in the pipe. Croc people are the only leg things I want. No, all, the only people. leg things. Um, I don't well, want skink people. I well, we're definitely going to get some monitors. I can't talk about skink people, for, skinks for two hours. I, or spiders. Wow. wow. You can do that one alone. <laughs> if you want a skink person on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else reptile-wise? I mean, we haven't done chameleon yet. So we do... Ooh, yeah. I mean, I did reach out to a chameleon person, so it is in the works. Um yeah, obviously, another one of those ones that we didn't mention in the beginning that would be a good, like, thing to shoot for would be Bindi or Robert Irwin. That's a They're pretty much, like, happen. the only ones who are, like, the only, the most untouchable people you could say, I feel, <laughs> besides David Attenborough. But you don't know who that is, so, I mean, he obviously doesn't matter. So... <laughs> But I, I did look up like the head reptile keeper of the Australia Zoo. I mean, it's weird because the Australia Zoo, uh, I believe, started as a private organization. So maybe they're more lax about it. But most like AZA accredited places, they're not going to talk to you about shit. So uh, they're just under wraps 100%. So it's kind of difficult. But yeah. So. That's the only reason why it's like hard. If you get, I would love to have zoo people on, but they literally won't. But then it's just so anything. hush hush. So what's the point? Yeah, like, yeah this is we would have no to point. like preface it before I'm really sorry, like, zoo people. Well, we would if have you're to, willing to talk. I would love yeah, to talk. Yeah, we would have to, to like reach out to them and like put in there like, but only if you're like want to talk about it. You know, like we don't want you on just for anything like, else. Darting around things. Darting, yeah, we want <laughs> we want real. Real insider information. Yeah, but I think we're really just going to expand our horizons, 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 horizons. Wow, that was so not necessary. Oh, sorry. Um, we also obviously you're expanding. We're expanding everything. We're wow. both fatter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, there's way too much truth in that. It's kind of depressing. <laughs> Um, we're expanding. We want to expand our podcast. We want to. Ex we already have expanded our collection. 
Um, do you think we're going to expand more this year? Probably. We will we both, just by default. You have a problem. What do you mean by default? Oh, because we'll get new. We'll make new stuff. Yeah. Is that I mean, what you I, mean? I cannot or? keep back projects that I'm already in the process of, you know. I'm not going <laughs> to stop. You know, I'm looking for a certain... I'm trying to get to a goal here. I always want to move the needle forward. So I'm not going to sell off my forward needle. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I feel like you're being super vague. And yeah, like I don't know why I, right now, I don't have to don't speak in code, but I that. am. Um, so Mike Kosicki said, uh, Orient Society, get them on. Um, I did reach out to them. Also, we have something going on with them. Starting in February, wink, wink, hint, 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 hint. Oh, things I don't know about. No, I told you about it. You just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oops. Oh, oops. Whoopsie. Tell me again later. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I feel like we're giving. This is all one big curse at this point. True. We shouldn't. We talk. are. We shouldn't. We're gonna. Cursing we're gonna shit. fudge ourselves and not be able to get any of these things to happen. <laughs> I just realized someone said get Dr. Ian Malcolm, which I didn't put that connection together because I'm not like a giant Jurassic Park person. But <laughs> Evan said is Jeff Goldblum. And <laughs> that's one of the people that they suggested. Oh, I don't. It's Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic I've Park. I've never watched uh, Jurassic Park, so I don't. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oops. Whatever. Yeah. No, I didn't um, know either. Um, And so I feel weird mentioning this right now, but I... I don't know. I should. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If you guys are in the chat right now, you've noticed that we also enabled. Oh, that is this I, YouTube. Th it's like so. It's awkward. We feel really uncomfortable. Humbling. It's uncomfortable. At the same time, though, no, it's cool. Uh, um, we so enabled this feature everyone's... on YouTube called Super Chat. Yeah. Which basically, um, if you donate, I don't know exactly how it works, but if you donate, your your post of your donating becomes like a super thing and highlighted and when someone watches this later it'll be like right at the top um and they'll get to see your name and your comment everything and it's just obviously a way to support us and what we're doing um so thank, so thank you, you to guys. the people who've already downloaded That's not awesome. downloaded donated today um, yeah, I hope we're, we're not cursing us ourselves by this we're either. totally almost covering the cost to upload them now just sweet <laughs> we're really getting up there guys because everyone appreciates the new podcast or the new mic stands <laughs> yeah <laughs> it hey, we moved them off to, to the sides so you can see our face again you probably can't hear i don't know i keep looking I don't at know. you like yeah, i'm not we're supposed not, to we're still trying to work we're still trying out. to figure out this podcast we're trying to be legit like, um, we need to count how many episodes because I'm not 100% sure, but we're getting very close to a thousand. What? Yeah. A hundred? But yeah, someone said get get Dwight Howard. Wait, you just said a thousand. We've not no, done no, a thousand. No, no, I mean a hundred. Did I say a thousand? You said a thousand. Okay, I meant a hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah, a thousand. Um, <laughs> this was about to say, we might be very close to a hundred episodes, if not over. Crazy, we stopped man. counting. So Sting Dingo said, get Dwight Howard, who everyone knows. I mean, most people know once you're around for long enough, he's hush hush that he keeps snakes. But yeah, that that's, would be, that's another one that of those. Take a Kerry lot King, of also Kerry King of Slayer. And he obviously is owner of Psychotic Exotics. Um, Todd Dwyer, the guy who actually manages the business of Psychotic Exotics, was just on Snakes and the Fat Man, if you want to check that out. So that's an interesting little thing. But Kerry King of Slayer, the guitarist in Slayer, he owns that company and it's pretty badass. But I don't know if he's doing very. I mean, we could we could try if you really wanted to. But I feel like that's better left to uh, that's better left to Eric and Owen for the Morelia they got, guys to get yeah. the Morelia guy. Yeah, and uh, Slash Mike Kosicki said Slash Slash keeps. I don't know if he does anymore, but he used to at least um, keep boa constrictors. And uh, yeah, it would be it would be interesting to get him on. I feel like um, we just talk about end up talking about other stuff. But you also don't want to <laughs> be like when you get someone like that. You don't want to be like, so how were the 
women and drugs in the 80s. <laughs> like, he, does, he probably doesn't want to talk about guns and roses. I know, but that's what we're going to end up talking, you know. It's like 19... How do you avoid that? Tell us about Appetite for Destruction. It would have to be somehow connect into his personal life with snakes and stuff like that. Right. Why are we even talking? We're never going to get slashed. Them. These are our wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? There's also, uh, obviously, Leonard. Um, what's his name? Hofstetter. Wow. You don't get that um, reference. No. Um, I hope someone gets that reference. What the hell is it? the guy who plays for the Jets who keeps... Oh, that uh, uh, Bill Leonard, just went to go see? Leonard. I don't know. He is very, very long. Uh, but yeah, he's a professional yeah. football player. He plays for the New York Jets. And uh, Big Cat. What's his name? Leonard. Ah, Let's just it. call him Big Cat. Yes. He just got a snake from uh, Bill. Yeah. Steagle of Phoenix Reptiles. Um, so that was cool. It's cool to see when like big, huge celebrities keep snakes. Um, and you'd think that would have more of an influence on the snake world, but I feel like it doesn't. And maybe it doesn't. I just don't know. Yeah. Like it makes a Leonard Williams is his name. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Bill, or, uh, Evan, Evan and Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> um, Brevin, yeah. Brandon Does Evan. it, do you think like, celebrities keeping snakes makes an effect on the community or has an effect it's weird that none of them want people to know, to that know they about it. like snakes. they're not they don't publicize it that often really they're not making it a big yeah. thing yeah and it's like it's kind of shitty in that way but i mean i know leonardo dicaprio keeps what? tortoises at oh, least lame. he's in a, at least tortoises i don't know if he has any other reptiles but you know he talks Obviously, all he does is if you look at his Instagram, people are going to want to see pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio, but he's kind of a badass. And oh, he could be on our show. Stop he's our next on one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone's ever got a podcast with Leonardo DiCaprio. But uh, <laughs> you didn't even finish your sentence. What is his, he posting? His on whole Instagram? Instagram is like just conservation, it's only talking about like. He doesn't give one shit about putting pictures of himself. He just puts up like conservation, like global warming, climate change posts and stuff like that. So, right. So he's in the tortoises, I believe. But yeah, like what would it be if the celebrities like, I don't know, kept it out in the open about their snakes? <laughs> yeah, I feel like everyone, it's, it's a weird thing. It's almost like we want to we want snakes to be popular but we don't at the same time we don't want the things that come along with snakes being popular right mm -hmm. it's like yeah i want i want there to be every house has a snake right but then you have you know obviously the issues with cats and dogs which obviously cats are the number one most harmful invasive species around the world and they're so terribly you know, affecting the ecosystem. Now imagine everyone had a snake and then, you know, you can't control people letting them out. And also you don't trust every single person with every single species of snake. Uh, so and box, so just... box, so box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yes. Just... I know what you mean. Like we want people in it, but we don't want too many. I know. And maybe that's a flaw. Maybe that's why we're not. That's you everything know. though. Every every yeah. sort of hobby or whatever, you want more people in it, but you only you want to keep your ratio of good people to not good people low. I mean, I think about that all side note, I think about that all the time being a teacher. Like the world always needs more teachers. Always, always, always. I want more, I want more. But as someone who is a teacher, I don't want crap ones. I mean, no one wants crap ones. But oh, I don't yeah, even want I don't even of... want sea level one. You know, like sea level. I want I want more people in it, but I don't. I want good quality ones too. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, that's with anything. Well, um, if you think about it, like all the people we've talked to, pre ball python, post ball python. I mean, there are still people who are making a living in reptiles in the '80s, but the way it was done was had nothing to do with captive breeding. There was a lot of smuggling going on. But what happened was money was found in captive animals. Like mm -hmm. ball pythons gave value to captive bred animals and made consumers want captive bred animals, which will forever have an extremely positive effect on 
conservation because people started being turned off by the idea of wild caught animals. Right. And preferred captive bred animals because they fed better, they did better. And there were genetic mutations that were going on, which were obviously only available in captive bred individuals. So therefore it spurred the whole basically, and I know corn snakes, different colubrids started before then as far as mutations go in captive borns, but it really became our version of mainstream, you know, like your average normal person who wasn't a crazy hurt person could get into ball pythons because there was money in it. There was a potential to make money. There was a potential to make really, really cool things that, I mean, it's one thing for a person to love a snake. It's a lot easier to get someone to love a pink snake, a yellow snake, a purple <laughs> snake. It's a lot easier when they look like that to get people into it. So that's the thing. Like, yeah, we all want it to be big but we also want it to be legit and that's kind of what you get from it. you get people who aren't exactly always scientifically sound aren't exactly and i mean i'm not but at the same time it's like oh but sound, i want more people into it because you know so yeah we should people. stop being so elitist and snotty it's, about ha- it. it's, it's a hard it's a hard balance it's a hard yeah. balance between wanting more people to enjoy and love and appreciate these animals but at the same time more people who love and enjoy and appreciate them in a positive way Um, yeah but who are we to say what the right way is right well there's there's some things that are non uh sequiturs i think you just if you can run your business in a way that doesn't negatively affect other things meaning like you know i don't want to run a business that is affecting things further than me negatively as far as you know things like wild caught animals and stuff like that and doing your best but and then also they depend on you breeding those wild caught animals in order meaning like wild caught animals always have a place in the hobby because Mm -hmm. there's always people trying to establish them now is there any place in the hobby for a wild caught red blood python I don't know. That'd be a hard sell for me. I mean, there's plenty of red blood pythons out there. Yeah. Is there a room for wild caught Curtis? Maybe more so Sumatran short tails, maybe more so, you know, cause there's less people captive breeding them, but still the influx that we have, is there any reason for a wild caught ball python? I hope never no. <laughs> literally never or an AML corn snake. That wild caught carpet python. though. That's a story. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get it here? Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely, so I think it'd be interesting though, how we started this little section is it'd be interesting if celebrities did show off. More. And you see those influxes though, of like when pop culture affects reptiles. Really? So say after Jurassic park, when we saw that lizard in Jurassic park, which we know as a frilled lizard or frilled dragon it basically hooded out and spit poison or some shit at the (laughs) at the person all of a sudden um iguanas were huge and frilled dragons were huge and things like basculus were huge back in the day and were just wild caught brought in around that time and you know that basically what kicked off the giant green iguana market the whole like you know, they were coming out of Belize for $2.50 each, green iguanas. I mean, they were coming all from um, South America, Central America, whatever the hell it is. Uh, I sound like an idiot. But uh, they were basically coming in for $2.50 each, thousands at a time. And That's crazy. Yeah, and that was basically triggered by Jurassic Park from my belief. So, Do you think uh, Brittany... And remember that had an effect on anything. Remember, yeah, I mean, everyone wanted, yeah, an albino berm. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know if they knew everyone knew it was an albino, you know, but they saw that big snake on her. And I feel like, I don't know. And I think that was, you know, that was a big deal at that time still. I don't think it was, uh, it wasn't a $200 snake, $150 snake at the time. So, what was it back then? I wonder. Oh, I have no idea. I couldn't imagine. Excuse what year me. that was? Ooh, 2000. But let's go 2008. I wish I had a good memory because. Come on, fact checkers. When was Britney at the VMAs with the snakes? <laughs> so 
It was brought in by Tom Crutchfield. I believe he saw. <gasps> what? I didn't yeah, know that. He saw there was a famous dealer. I don't think it was Anson Wong. It was someone else who had a National Geographic or a magazine like that had an albino berm on them like draped across their shoulders bob clark saw it and i think tom crushfield saw it and they somehow i think tom originally imported that animal from a dealer and then gave it to bob somehow and bob somehow produced it but and then the next animal that bob got was the albino ball python (laughs) which started the whole thing but, I did uh, not know and that I think, she got it from or oh, borrowed it from Tom. Yeah, I th- wow. did. Did Tom breed it once? Get hats, keep the hats, and give the albino. Either way, what happened was somehow Bob bred the first one in captivity, the first albino berm, as well as the first albino ball python. And you know what's weird is that Bob hadn't bred a ball python ever. The first one he bred was that albino ball python, which was like, at the time, probably like a $50,000 snake or something like that. He says Bob bred them. Yeah. So I just oh, said sorry. It. But uh, yeah, which is just. Ooh, that's cool. Nice little tidbit. But that was, I mean, fuck, I wish I remembered when the albino berm was brought in. I think it was in the 90s. I don't, I don't know. know. I was talking about Britney. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's more. like early 2000s, right? Yeah. Early to mid 2000s. Um, okay. But yeah, for the chat, guys, I'm not saying anything good or bad about Bob Clark. I'm just stating facts. We just, yeah, we're not, <laughs> you didn't even have to say that. We are just historical, uh, <laughs> whatever. We're just saying, yeah. But, we have reached our first bum, two bum, hours bum, of 2019. Bum, 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 bum. And thank you guys for doing a little review, following us on this review of 2018. Boom. If you miss any of those podcasts that we brought up today, um, go out and listen to them. I hope it didn't sound like a commercial for all of our podcasts because it didn't mean that. But it is a little bit. But we also did commercial to all the people who were on it. We were also promoting yeah. them. So it was more cross-pollination. I hope that our podcast is a platform for people to get out there, whether it's business, whether it's practices, whether it is organization, whatever they're doing, or just message. Just being able to get it out there to, to more people. So it's like, I hope that we gained you know, gray band kink snake people from having Stu Tennyson on. And I hope that we gain some venomous people from Ray Morgan, but and Randall he Bear. also got some people that didn't necessarily care for gray band and kink snakes or didn't necessarily care for him venomous just from our show. And maybe got one person interested in what the other person's, what the guest is doing. Cause you know, all these people, most of the people that we have on dedicate their life in large part, to what they do whether it's breeding animals whether it's working with animals whether it's just creating a good environment for us all to exist in as far as the reptile community goes so i hope everyone benefits from it the listeners the guests and i mean obviously we do yeah (laughs) because i mean we do just by getting to know these people just by getting to talk to them and ask them stupid questions or good questions or mediocre questions <laughs> All <laughs> or totally irrelevant questions, questions about what their favorite they put on their pizza, pizza topping is. <laughs> Thank you. Simply serpents. He's not even here tonight, but yeah, it's just, I can't believe we did it. You know, another year of it. it. <laughs> like, there were times where I thought, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's stop the podcast. I think everyone has that for everything. Yeah. But I'm glad we kept doing it. And it's like, the moral of the story like that's is keep just on doing something. It. I don't know. It feels good to say now that, like, we did it. You know, we had like a good foundational full year. Um, and we're going to keep on going. But I still, you know, even now though, I'm like, how is NPR doing we're it for coming seven up years? On... I don't know how they keep doing it. And I, I don't know if we'll make it seven years like NPR, but we definitely want to keep going. 
Yeah. I mean, I just, it's coming up. I need to look at the exact date, but it is coming up on two years exactly. I think it's two years in February. Of the first one? Yeah. That's crazy. And we didn't even realize till recently, till Brandon was going back and listening to our old ones. I didn't realize I came on in the second podcast. Like, that's funny that we started was it dating. the second or third? I thought it was the second. I don't know. We started dating shortly before you started it. Mm-hmm. And like, who asked their like new girlfriend, hey, come be on this? No, week? you wanted to be on it. I, I don't, don't you believe remember. you. You keep yes, saying you that did. I don't believe you. I don't want to be on it half the time every Monday. Oh, man, don't I don't believe you that. that I wanted to get on it. You, I you swear did. you asked me. You asked. No, I swear you were like, you can ask me questions. Like, oh, you don't know yeah, about yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Like, and then you, you wanted to be on Dino, it. From there on you, out. You got me on, you wanted me to be on it the first time. And then I probably, I guess I wanted to be on it for a little bit after that. Maybe. I don't remember. Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, so Ryan said um, she pulled an OMAC. So it's um, an Owen, Owen McIntyre. Oh. He joined Eric after the second Episode. one of, a, oh. of NPR, I believe. Because because Eric that. just like me realized oh shit you can't really do this it's alone. real awkward when it's by yourself <laughs> and then it's also real hard to ask for guests when it's by yourself and you haven't done anything unless you have like really good friends I think that's what's kind of interesting like we when we started the podcast I mean I bought from people but I never really cared to like start to keep up a relationship with them yeah so i would just them. buy and then whatever like a lot of the people that i talked to they or a lot of people that i bought from it didn't really go past because i was one of those buyers who would just give them the money and not like i wouldn't be i didn't want to be a pain in the ass right that sounds like a drug deal i just gave them the money <laughs> yeah Daff them with the cash in hand. But <laughs> yeah, I just, I didn't, I never wanted to seem like a pain in the ass. So I never got to, to know anyone really, unless it was at like a local show. And I was moving around so much that I didn't really have a local show even. So, so it's like, I don't know. It's nice to actually have a community, you know, actually be in the reptile community. And I implore anyone out there who's debating it in any form or any way, just get out there and talk to people. And there's going to be people who don't talk to you. There's going to be a lot more that do talk to you. And there's not a lot of, I mean, there really isn't a lot of egos. You can really ask anyone and you'll get replies somewhere down the line. No one's too big for, to respond to anyone. And, um, Evan mentioned GT key that yeah, GTP keeper radio as well. So we forgot to, to mention Bill and buddy in the beginning, but I think they're also coming out with a podcast soon with Ian and uh, okay. Ian's making the round. Oh, Ian, so we should, we got to do it. Southeast carpet fest. They, oh, shit. Ian, I know Ian messaged me the other day, asked me if I got my Southeast carpet fest shirt. <laughs> he is the king of putting on carpet fest. Yes. How That's, dare you say that? Sorry, Evan. Well, we Evan's listening. And, and Eric and Owen. Yeah. But I'm sorry. Who does as much legwork we'll as Ian? We'll see. Uh, no yeah. one, I no think Eric one's, might admit to that. Yeah, I think I swear I've even heard of Eric saying that. Like, no one does as much legwork as Ian does um, of SNJ Reptiles for Southeast Carpet Fest. Like, he's really, really trying to make it the best one for sure uh but this year we'll be going to the og one so that's exciting oh shit that'll that'll be that'll be fun because that will open us up to a whole another um carpet fest man that we never and maybe more people to have on the podcast yeah there you go um but we'll keep although i have a feeling that eric and owen will get to him first true we'll keep emailing (laughs) people and keep reaching out to people and hoping they say yes to come on. I feel like we were all over the place, but I feel like it at least gave you a little bit like 
background on what we're thinking about. Yeah, sorry, everyone. You know when it's just Joe and I, it's going to be super scattered, usually very silly. I think we kept the silliness under control today, so I'm proud of us on that front. Um, but but you fun. still got to learn about us, and you got to learn about little podcasts from the past year that you maybe missed. Um, but I remind everyone, if you want to catch our podcast, obviously you can catch it on YouTube live and see our beautiful faces. But if you'd rather not, you can just hear our, our annoying voices on iTunes, <laughs> SoundCloud, Stitcher. Uh, we're Real not, we're right not now, on Spotify, but it, we got to ask we Justin. We are determined. Justin, Justin of the herpetical, her, I can't say that word. Um, that word on, they got on Spotify. So we got to get ourselves on spotify yeah. tell us and that'll be the um ways. another way for y'all to be able to listen to us um and learn more about snakes and conservation snakes. and foreign people <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're actually renaming the podcast to snakes conservation uh, and foreign, foreign people, people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but okay i've said it like 30 times but thank you we really love talking with you guys sorry we couldn't talk so much today it's been so long man i know two weeks is a long time to be off but it was a good little break um we were busy during new year's and christmas i hope you guys all had a great holiday season and a great new year and may the new year i don't know i tried to be cheesy and i lost wow. it happy breeding season to all those oh pythons, i like folks. that so, happy yeah. breeding season happy and brumation. brumation rest period for all the clubrid folks which is i mean really just as good if not better than breed i mean breeding's fun but not doing anything pretty <laughs> top notch <laughs> So shout out to all my fellow colubrid people who don't know what to do with themselves these days. And that's it, guys. Thank you for listening to the podcast. And I guess go listen to NPR because I'm assuming it's on because it's Tuesday. and we. Can, oh, yeah, that's true. We're, we we're digging into it. Yo, Sorry, and Ian's on there. Okay. Oh, snap. Bye, guys. For Later, real. Later, guys. Thanks.